<clears throat> it seems appropriate that in this uh, evening when we are uh, experiencing our first snow day in some parts of our synod and snowstorm that we're uh, talking about the season of Advent. Um, it, I believe it is my favorite season of the church year, um, both be partly because it combines that uh, memories of a, of a pretty, pretty delightful childhood um, and preparing for Christmas and also because of what it's come to mean as part as a key part of our spiritual journey as God's people, as we learn to walk in darkness, as we learn to walk by faith, learn to breathe with the coming season and look for the light that is to come. And so uh, I'm, I'm excited to share these Advent resources entitled Lord Stir Us to Dream. Uh, what we'll do tonight is we'll talk a little bit about why, why, the, why these particular resources for this Advent, why, uh, why the option of a stewardship response, of a response of the faith practice of generosity. Um, and then we'll explore uh, the resources that are available and I'll walk you through, uh, carefully walk you through the uh, week by week sort of how to. Um, if at any time you have questions, feel free to offer them in the chat feature or to just uh, blurt out and interrupt me, that's fine. I'll be doing a lot of talking during this time, but, um, and we will, we will conclude exactly at eight o'clock, but don't, don't, do not hesitate to ask your questions. And so I thought, it would be delightful for us to begin by sharing with each other uh, perhaps a favorite memory of the season of Advent. And so I'm going to share with you and then we'll take some time and go into small groups for about just for about five minutes. Um, and we'll each have about one minute to share a favorite memory of Advent. So um, we'll go into groups of five, Chris, when I tell you. So I remember driving from our home uh, one block away from Lambeau Field and we're just outside Green Bay, Wisconsin in a little town called Ashwaubenon, Wisconsin to our church on Sunday morning. And I, as a little boy, I was never very conscious of the time of year. And then we would pass by this um, Moravian church uh, on our way to our Church of Resurrection Lutheran on Shano Avenue in Green Bay, Wisconsin. And they would have this huge Advent wreath out front. And then I would know it was Advent and that the, the, the time, the countdown would start uh, before Christmas. And of course, as a child, that's what it was all about, was the countdown to Christmas. But I believe it helped me in many ways spiritually as I continue often in the season of heaven to reflect back on that experience as a child because it drew me into consciousness about time and the passing of time which is a part of uh, what we become aware of in the season of advent in most of the world where uh, where Christianity initially flourished uh, there was a discernible uh, change in the season during this time in which the light was going out of the world, uh, each day seemed like it was noticeably different than the next day. And we have a sense of uh, that something is happening in creation. And it seems as though what's happening within us is in sync with what is happening out in creation. And maybe there's this tendency to pull into ourselves a little bit to become a little bit introspective. Uh, it is a time for us to wonder how God has been at work in our lives and to wonder about the future, to lament about the past. Um, it is a time to sense our barrenness, our need for God, our emptiness. Uh, oftentimes we, we boil it down to waiting, but I believe it's not just absent waiting or vacant waiting, but it's a time of, of expectant waiting it's a time where we learn how to live with emptiness, with the confidence that God will fill that space. And of course, God can't fill our, that space unless it's empty. And so uh, all of these things, I believe, are were connected uh, ultimately to that initial experience of as a little boy passing by the Moravian church on the way to church, seeing the great big Advent wreath out front with the four candles 
and recognizing that the season had started and becoming very aware of the passing of time and seeing how those lights would get a little brighter each week because the morning would be a little darker. And so each week those lights would burn a little brighter as we would pass them by. So I'm gonna invite you to go into uh, small groups now and share a favorite memory of the season of Advent. All right, the rooms are open now. And so you'll click join a room and I'll bring you all back um, after five minutes. You won't have to do anything. All right, everybody should be back, Bishop Bill. Welcome back, everyone. I hope that time was as delightful for you as it was for us in our room. I was reminded of another thing about Advent, which we'll uh, talk about uh, as we share these Advent resources in Lord Stirrest to Dream, which is uh, the practice of, of taking an, uh, an ancient practice or, or a, our childhood practice and transforming it for use today and in the future. Um, and I think there might be a lot of that going on this year with the unique times we're living in with COVID-19. I'm going to share a prayer, so uh, will you pray with me? Awaken us, O Lord God, with your grace for the future. As you graciously forgive our sins, protect and strengthen us from all danger so that we may serve you with a clear conscience and with courage. And so that we may joyfully receive our Lord Jesus Christ when he comes again in glory. For he lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. So, Lord Stir Us to Dream is the theme that uh, we are sharing with you for Advent with resources for every Sunday in Advent, including sermons for three of the Sundays, for Sundays one, two, and three, uh, with uh, worship and uh, uh, other kinds of worship resources, such as litanies and prayers for the first three Sundays of Advent. The fourth Sunday uh, is a celebration Sunday that uh, can be a child's Christmas pageant. There's an online best Christmas, best uh, online Christmas pageant ever, um, and some resources for having that be a celebration Sunday. Um, there, you'll, there are also resources for Bible studies and some um, le leadership uh, equipping resources. You'll also find uh, some opportunities to invite people into consideration of uh, lifelong giving and planned giving um, with uh, resources from our plan, our regional gift planner, Pastor Keith uh, Pearson that are designed for, um, for the, that are specifically designed to this theme and for this season. So uh, what I'll tell you before we start is there are more resources here that you then you will be able to, to utilize. Um, and uh, we haven't decided if there will be a prize for the person that uses the most resources. I don't think we'll do that, but uh, there could be. And I suppose it would be possible, but I think you'll find that you'll have some good options here in the resources that you choose to use. So uh, first of all, why, why a series during Advent? I think, uh, well, for many of the, I've already shared many of the reasons. I think this is a time, we're living through a time together which feels a lot like an extended Advent time in which our hearts are just yearning for a new future, for something to change, for some news to break that's good news, that makes, that, that transforms our lives, that lifts us out of the, the pain and the, often the, maybe the drudgery that we're living through. And that is oftentimes, uh, that's, we, we associate the, that reality with Advent. And perhaps this year we're more in touch with it than we ever have been before. I think that um, as people, as, as people living in the 20th and 21st centuries, um, we have been perhaps immune from some of the, the vulnerabilities that people have experienced in 
in ages past from some of the ways in which people became conscious of how fragile and precious their life was, how tenuous it could be, how much we stand in need of God and of Jesus Christ to come into our lives. But now we've been awakened to that once again. And it's, so it seems like an excellent time for us to, to be together as God's people around some common themes and some common resources in Advent as we live through this time together. So I'll be walking with you through the uh, resources on a week by week basis, beginning with the time just before Advent, all the way through the fourth Sunday. But I think in order to set our hearts and minds in, in the theme and in the purposes of this, of this series, it would be good to start with the letter that is recommended to be sent out um, just prior to the first week of Advent. So that week of Thanksgiving. And I'll share that letter with you now. I'm gonna share my screen and hopefully I can find the letter, there it is. So I'll just read this as we'll read it together. Dear coworkers in God's work, and these will be available in Word documents, so you can revise them. You can change the uh, you can change the greeting. Um, you can change the wording to make it more applicable to what to the particular way in which you're using these resources. But this is a sample letter that's available to you. Dear coworkers in God's work, you'll see that it's got the. Uh, the Lord's Tourist to Dream logo at the top. As we enter into the Advent season, we do so feeling a deep connection to God's people of every time and place who lived with the ache of a broken world and who dreamed of a better future. This year, our Advent series is provided to us through the Northwestern Minnesota Synod and is entitled Lord's Tourist to Dream. It invites us to take four faithful steps that are familiar to God's people throughout the centuries. Week one, Sunday, November 29th and following, Lord, stir us to lament. We will attend to the hurts and dashed hopes of our distant and recent past and express these in creative ways with the faith practice of lament. Week two, Sunday, December 6th and the week following, Lord, stir us to repent. We will name the ways we've fallen short and contributed to the brokenness of our world through the faith practice of repentance. Sunday, December 13th and the week following, Lord, stir us to dream. We will dream of a new future through Jesus Christ and commit ourselves to this future through the faith practice of generosity. This will be our commitment week when members will be invited to prayerfully decide what portion of their income God is calling them to share with the church for the coming year as we dream of our new future together and commit ourselves to it through our giving. <clears throat> Sunday, December 20th and the week following. Lord, stir us to celebrate. We will celebrate what God is doing in and through us and the future that is already ours through our Lord Jesus Christ. With Mary and Joseph as they journeyed toward Bethlehem to the place where our Lord Jesus was born that Christmas morning, we'll make our way to the great celebration of our Lord's birth with honesty about the past, faithfulness in the present, and hope for the future. Thank you for joining us on this journey. So that gives you some idea of the themes as they're unfolding and, and uh, the texts for each Sunday. The recommended text is from Isaiah and, uh, and, and, and follows us, that text follows us uh, in a, um, uh, as we move through it, um, can, what do you call that? <laughs> when one reading follows the other. Anyway, you know what I mean? Um, one week after the other into uh, the full four weeks of Advent and they're uh, familiar Advent texts. Um, <clears throat> so you may be asking, well, that seems like a really weird time to do stewardship ministry and why would we suggest that? First of all, let me say, you can make use of these resources without using them as a stewardship resource, but I would recommend you really consider that. I was the pastor at a congregation that was a mission congregation, and so we, we weren't uh, entrenched in uh, practices in the way we always did it before, uh, and so we were free to try something new, and uh, mostly by accident of the reality that we hadn't planned anything on time, 
one year we we decided to go ahead and do our stewardship work in Advent. And it ended up being such a delightful experience and it felt so appropriate to the season to our people that uh, we, we did it every year after that. And uh, we developed themes like these and each year uh, at this time of year, uh, we invited people to imagine how God was calling them to grow in the faith practice of generosity among other faith practices. And I think, um, so it was a congregation where we started where our average uh, giving was was probably 1% or less of household income and about $50,000 a year to about a half a million dollars a year and over 5% uh, on average household giving. And that was, um, I think that was due in large part to the fact that we disconnected our stewardship work from the experience of the time of the year when we're doing budgeting and when we're worrying about the budget for the next year. That was already done. Um, it was going to be voted on in January, but the work was already done. Instead, we were able to focus on, on giving as a faith practice. And we did it as a time of, at a time of year when people were already thinking about the year to come. They were already imagining how life could be different and ways in which they wanted to be more faithful. And they were already thinking about generosity. And so uh, it made a lot of sense uh, it, and it, it re resonated in what proved to be effective. So this resource is really intended for, uh, for it can be used anywhere, but we, we built these resources with the congregation in mind that maybe has not done much around stewardship ministry for quite some time. And we thought this might be sort of a soft opening, a way in which to enter into that ministry in a faithful way that uh, completely leaves aside the need of the church to receive money and focuses instead on the opportunity we have to grow in our faith when we undertake uh, giving as a faith practice. And so uh, that's why uh, we are offering this as a resource at this particular time, uh, at this particular time of year. And as I said, you certainly have the option of not utilizing it in that way, but I hope that you will. So I'm just going to pause there and see if there's any questions. Not seeing any, I'm going to go first of all to the, maybe I don't have it up. Hang on, I think I do. Yeah, there it is. All right. So here I is, uh, I'll just go back to our home page. And you'll see the right, the, the first banner that comes up is the Lord's stir us to dream. And if you click on that, which I'm attempting to do right now, but nothing's happening. So there we go. Um, you'll see it brings you to a variety of materials. It'll be um, important for you to familiarize yourself with these materials because it may not be immediately obvious where things are living and which link they're living, but, but um, you'll kind of get the, the hang of, it, of the, the sense of where things are. So there's of course a overview introduction and there's some materials in there which we'll look at. Uh, specific materials for the commitment Sunday, which is the third Sunday, December 13th. Ways to dream and respond, which we'll talk about, are some faith practices to accompany each week that to do as a whole community. Stewardship and generosity resources are some resources that we that we are receiving from some um, pretty amazing people in our uh, in our church. Um, some what we might think of as subject matter experts, and we'll talk a little bit about the, those resources. Obviously, the worship resources, and these, by the way, these are going to grow. So if I go here right now, you'll see that right now, um, you'll see there's going to be some Advent sermons. And uh, so there you can see, wait, are you, are you seeing the, the, the Word document right now? No, okay. Um, so if you open that, it opens up uh, a document that says, who is going to be the preacher each week. Week, week one, it'll be Pastor Larry Strenge, um, who uh, is a former DEM from the Southwestern Minnesota Synod and now serves 
um, at, in the churchwide organization as a consultant uh, for small member congregations around stewardship ministry. Week two will be our, our very own uh, pastor, Brigitte Catlin, who's a pastor um, up in Vaudette. And week three will be a sermon by me, and those will be posted soon. So um, we'll, um, I'm just going to stop sharing and take you to the, Chris, where did we put the, uh, the resource that we just did, the, uh, um, that I just sent you today? Those are in the introduction, the first, the first button okay. underneath the banner. Okay, we're going to open the instructions and the timeline here. So let's see. So I'm going to just show you. So if you go to that website and um, I'm in the, I'll, I'm going to click on the introduction and overview materials. So there's the invitation letter. That's the invitation letter actually to you, or you can use it with your council if they're still thinking about it, um, to consider using these resources for the season. And then the same thing with the introduction video It's really intended primarily for leadership as they think about utilizing these resources. Some FAQs to accompany the very same thing, like why, why would we do this and why this time of year and, and what's, what, what's the theme and why this theme. Um, here are the, the presenters and I'll share that with you in a minute. But right now I'm gonna have you look at the instructions and timeline we just looked at the week one letter. That's the letter that goes out right before week one. But I'll share the instructions and timeline here. But to do that, I'll have to stop sharing and then go to that document. And there we are. So here we have the instructions and timeline for uh, Lord stir us to dream. So prior to week one, which will be before November 29th, um, you attend the training or watch it. And so here you are uh, attending training. So check, uh, review all the materials. Uh, I will encourage you to, to kind of just poke around in there and become familiar with what's there. Decide uh, which ones you'll make use of. Um, and once you've done that, I would encourage you to put together a schedule of those opportunities. If you're gonna make use of all three of the Bible studies, for example, if you're gonna make use of all of the resources from Larry Stringy on, um, on uh, why, the why of giving and why, um, how we need to overcome the taboo of talking about money in church and why that's so important. Um, but, but once you have decided what resources you're gonna use and when, um, we have some suggestions here, but you can use them at any time. I think it would be really helpful for you to put together just a brief uh, schedule uh, and make sure that that's printed each time you talk about this in your newsletters, mailing and other media postings. So there's a November newsletter article, and that's a link that says uh, letters and newsletter articles. And there's, a, there's, there's one for November. So that obviously will need to be published soon if it's going to make your November new letter, newsletter. We have the week one letter, which should arrive in the mail before the 29th. And we just read that. Um, I would advise the, your stewardship team and your, that your council watch Generosity with Adults Over 40. That's a piece that we, um, that we received from um, Somebody on the team remind me now. Uh, Grace um, Pomeroy. Grace Duddy Pomeroy. Yeah, um, I've worked with her before, actually in person, not even online, and then I forgot her name. So I apologize to Grace. But uh, she's done, she does a lot of work with generosity um, with uh, young people. And so this is a great piece, I think, for you to just watch. It's less than a half hour. Uh, really powerful piece. 
This is the time then in your newsletter and at other times to invite people to make use of Those Who Dream, which is an Advent devotional, an online Advent devotional. And I'll show you where that is as well. Sometime before week one, sometime between now and Thanksgiving, I think it would be really smart to share with your leaders and, and make available to the whole congregation the video from Pastor Larry Stringy on why it is essential that we do stewardship ministry and overcoming the taboos of talking about money. So those are the things you'll want to accomplish before November 29th, which is week one. Keep in mind, this is a suggested timeline. There's enough resources there that you can mix and match and make use of as you wish. Any questions so far? And Chris, if you can monitor the chat or anybody raising their hand, that'd be helpful. So for week one, we're gonna recommend that you make use of the sermon for week one from Pastor Larry String. Um, make use of the other resources, worship resources. There's a litany, uh, an Advent wreath lighting litany that's there. Um, you might provide the week one Bible study, which is uh, available um, in with uh, a video and other resources. Um, you can do that on the Sunday before or after worship online or in person. You can do it. Uh, you can offer it on a Wednesday evening or another time or just make it generally available for people to do asynchronous on their own time. Um, there's this piece that's entitled um, Introductions to Lord Stir Us to Dream. So each week it's just it's an announcement, a one paragraph that you can use in a bulletin, a letter, social media postings, just a, just a, a weekly message. And I would in, encourage you to make use of that. So on this particular Sunday, whether you're worshiping virtually or in person in some way or some combination, I would invite you to have a council member do a temple talk. So the theme on this first week is lament. And there's a, there are suggestions in that in, introductions to Lord Stir Us to Dream. There are suggestions in there on how to undertake this faith practice of lamenting, writing down and some kind of paper that can be easily destroyed later. Some of the things that we're, that we're, that we're lamenting over the recent and distant past. Um, and so I have a council member say, give a temple talk on what I have lamented and what I am hoping for. And then that person would remind folks of the schedule over the next three weeks and that response week is December 13th through 19th. Um, so then make use of the ways to dream and respond. That's actually the place for that faith practice is not in the introductions. The introductions are the messages. So I apologize about that. Then there's some other possible resources uh, for at home there. Of course, for at home, there's the, uh, we already referenced the, um, the, uh, the, um, the devotional resource, uh, which is uh, those who dream. There's also uh, some got instructions for building an Advent log and doing Advent devotions, or you, or you could just utilize the those who dream resource. And then there's some ornaments that people can decorate and make use of. And then there's resources for that in on the web page as well. So um, I'm gonna yep. Bishop Bill, there is one question. Marilyn asked the generosity video. Marilyn, are you talking about the one for under 40? That one? Yeah. That one is under it's in the um, resources for the first third of life, stewardship for the first third of life. Um, and the video is up for there. I don't have all the videos up, but I have it up there. Yeah. So here is the Grace Pomeroy video right here. It's 29 minutes and 29 seconds long. And that's for the um, generosity with adults under 40. Great question, thanks. Let's see, let me go back to instructions and timeline. Oops.
So are you seeing the instructions right now? No, okay. I'll just stop sharing. I'll go to. Now you're seeing the instructions in timeline, right? Good. So week two, um, the, uh, of course, there'll be a sermon from Pastor Birgitta Catlin. Um, there'll be the worship resources once again. There'll be a second Bible study based on the theme, Lord Stir Us to Repent. Um, and there again, that you can offer that at any time. It can be asynchronous, something that people do on their own, or it can be something that you um, provide at a particular time. It would require very little preparation on your part because it's all there. Uh, video and uh, and homework, worksheets, etc. Uh, half hour Bible study. Um, then there's the introductions uh, to Lord Stuart's Dream, which is that list of messages which you can use on social media. I would republish your schedule somewhere. Um, make use of ways to dream and respond. So these will be faith practices around repentance. Um, and then, of course, we have the other resources of the Advent Log and the Dream Ornaments. Um, so this might be a good week to make use of the plan giving materials from Pastor Keith uh, and uh, some really great materials here, including, including a video. I'm just going to go there now. You could uh, target a specific population in your congregation of people who are over a certain age, perhaps people over 60, uh, for whom the planned giving might feel more uh, relevant at their particular stage of life. But here are the planned giving resources. And there's a really um, a delightful reflection, a video reflection here from Pastor Keith um, on uh, on the, the theme and on um, how it relates to plan giving as a faith practice. And then some very specific resources. Uh, and then also a bulletin insert, which uh, if I open it, you won't see it. So I'm just going to let you quick see it here. So, so as you can see, it's copy ready, or obviously you can just uh, you can just um, highlight half of it and publish it in some form, uh, either via email or whatever other way in which you're reaching out to people right now, or you can mail it. Um, but there's this this resource, which I think is a good one. So this might be a week in which you uh, make plan giving resources available and you might uh, simply have the video and and then uh, email or put on a in a uh, maybe you have a shared folder for your congregation or you can make one available in which you place the resources. Uh, and uh, just make that available to uh, maybe a target population in your in your congregation. All right, let's see. So we're back to the instructions and timeline. So um, if you're not worshiping in person um, or if they're doing in some combination, then toward the end of this, of this week, right before December 13th, I think this will be the best time for you to deliver the commitment Sunday materials via email or mail or by safely dropping them off at the door. Um, be sure to provide the commitment invitation letter, the commitment card, the guide to proportionate giving, or the step up chart. Those are kind of, um, you can use them complementarily. I, I got kind of see them as either or pieces, but, um, but they're, they're both excellent ways to invite people to think about the faith practice of generosity. 
And I think that if you are doing any kind of in-person worship at all, it'll be important to get this into people's hands uh, ahead of time uh, in this practice in some of these tangible ways. So then December 13th is the beginning of Commitment Week, Commitment Sunday or the start of Commitment Week. So I'll have a sermon for that Sunday. Uh, there'll be a, the same suite of worship resources. Uh, there'll be a Bible study that you can utilize that week in the same ways as the others. Um, you might have a, a someone give a temple talk. It could be pre-recorded. It could be on Zoom. It could be um, in the sanctuary, uh, live in a safe way. What am I dreaming? What am I dreaming of and why I want to grow in my giving in 2021? So someone to share a personal reflection about what they're hoping for and why they're making a commitment to grow. Um, and then it's always good to just offer instructions for filling out the very simple commitment card. If there are people that are squeamish about make, put, bringing a commitment card forward, um, first of all, I'd love to have a conversation with them. I'm very, you know, I've, uh, I'd be open to that and, and, uh, and, and maybe you would too, um, just to explore that, you know, what's, what's behind that. Um, I, I think that, uh, it's, it's possible we can come to a place of openness around these matters where we can speak about them freely, but, but if not, that's okay. If people are in a different space and they may have good reasons for being there, they could, fill out the commitment card and just keep it for themselves as a commitment that, that they're making that they don't wish to share with others. Uh, but hopefully many will agree to return a commitment card that can be used for mutual um, uplift and accountability. So we have a resource there on commitment week, which, which says that well, basically the, uh, the guidance here is to provide as many different ways, safe ways for people to return their cards as possible. Through the mail, by dropping them off at a, in a box, in a location, uh, in a sealed envelope, by taking a picture and texting it or, or sending it via email to a designated person in the congregation, the financial secretary, perhaps. Um, and so a lot of different possibilities for delivering that commitment card. And there's some commitment card options, by the way. Um, this may also be the week to make use of planned giving materials, one of these last two weeks, I would say. Um, and then, once again, um, the, the faith response piece and some other possible resources. So throughout the week, you're collecting uh, commitment cards. Maybe you collected some on the 13th right there. Some uh, got dropped off at the church in various fashions throughout the week. And then on the fourth, um, make use of the best digital Christmas pageant ever in the first third of life resources. Make use of the children's sermon that's in there. Um, report the results in a celebratory way. And then right after that, um, on that Monday or Tuesday of that week, send out the follow-up letter, the thank you letter to the people who participated. So I'm gonna stop there and then I'm gonna go with, just go through and peruse some of the resources with you. But before I do that, uh, questions. There was one question, a great question in the chat to me. I'm wondering about resources for youth. Um, and I am committed to putting in some great resources that I know of from the ELCA um, on general stewardship and generosity. Um, for all ages of those in the first third of life. Um, and if I have time, or I could ask a friend to write maybe like a youth group Bible study or something like that, but that will be coming, that would be coming down the pipe later. But there will be some resources for all the different um, age groups of the first third of life. Yeah, that is a great question. Thanks. And I do think and when you peruse these resources, you'll find that um, de depending upon the age, I think all of the resources here are would be appropriate, uh, like the Bible studies, for example, and even the videos for um, at least high school age uh, on up. But yeah, it would be great to include young people. So thanks for that, for, for that, Chris. 
Any other questions? Okay, let's just poke around here for a bit. So here we are uh, back at the, we'll just go back to the initial page there. Um, so here, when you click on the banner, it brings you here. So if you, if you click on the introduction and overview materials, again, you've got, um, you have all of these resources, the top three, which are really for your leadership. And then um, the instructions and timeline, which is for leadership. Um, and the, the week one letter is the one to send out to everybody ahead of time. I wanna um, show you something here, the, our presenters. So here are our presenters, and there's a resource here that you can you can put this out there uh, to create some anticipation and excitement. These are some of the contributors: Grace Duddy Pomroy, uh, the director of stewardship leaders at Luther Seminary, um, and uh, she's provided us with some uh, great resource on uh, working with young adults. Reverend Matthew Ian Fleming. Uh, teaching pastor at St. Andrew Lutheran Church in Eden Prairie is our Bible study writer, and he is preparing he, the week one Bible study is available right now. Um, the Lord stir us to lament Bible study, and then he'll also provide one for Lord stir us to repent and Lord stir us to dream, and those will be posted soon. Pastor Larry Strangy um, is, uh, is offering a variety of resources. Um, he is uh, uh, adjunct faculty at, for the Lilly School of Philanthropy, um, a trainer for cultivating generous congregations, um, and a really outstanding speaker. I think you're going to really enjoy the resources that he provides. And then I've already shared about uh, Pastor Keith Pearson, our regional gift planner, and uh, the resources he's provided for, uh, for planned giving for this particular time. So. Um, those are some of the resources there. Then as you look at the resources that are here, there's the, here are the commitment Sunday resources. So um, if you click on the commitment card, you're gonna see a variety of options there. Um, you have the guide to proportionate giving, uh, the step up chart for people to grow one step. Um, uh, these are the instructions on commitment week and the different ways that people can respond. Uh, this is the this is up at the top here is the letter that should accompany the commitment card, whether that's uh, hard copy or digitally. And then this is the follow up letter that goes out uh, thanking people for their participation. Bishop. Bill, yes. there is a question in the chat. Okay. Um, what is the Isaiah text? Um, it will be. Um, I knew someone was going to ask me that. So there's members of the team here. <laughs> I can't remember right now. What is the Isaiah text? Keith, is there a document where it would be on? Yes, Isaiah chapter 61. There's also drawing on Isaiah chapter 40. Um, but it's it it's in in that in, in those in those chapters. Thanks. So I know Pastor Al has those chapters memorized, so he'll be able to call those to mind immediately. <laughs> All right. Um, let's go back to the website here. And just see what else is here. Um, I want to look at this ways to dream and respond. Um, so here's where the instructions are for the advent log and the dream ornaments. I think it'll be helpful to actually share this document. So I'm going to go ahead and get that open. So here you get an idea of, um, yeah, there's the text right there, 61, one through seven. 
and so the spiritual practices for each week. And so um, down here is some, some suggestions of how to walk through this season on utilizing these spiritual practices of lament, repent, dream, and celebrate. Bill, so, if I might, please, uh, on the uh, Lord stirs to dream, there is an actual coloring. I, I've got, I will upload it, but it's, you can make copies of it and the children or families or individuals can actually do some coloring. Um, and I, we're indebted to Linda uh, for helping us raise this up uh, as a possibility. Um, so. Yeah, and as you can see from the, uh, from the gorgeous uh, logo, there's uh, that'll be some, a fun coloring project for someone. So uh, let's see where else would be helpful to go. I think the rest is, and here is some actual the, the files, uh, image files with uh, logos and et cetera will be coming. You went to the one that I don't have anything on yet. That's okay. <laughs> um, so there's also a newsletter article for December. Um, I won't open it here, but uh, there's the one for November, which you'll want to get out now, and obviously the December newsletter article for your December newsletter. So, and this is those weekly introductions that you can use in your bulletins and social media. So, I know we have some members of the team on, um, and you're probably thinking, well, you missed this and should have talked about that. So, I'm going to invite anyone that was from the team that might have something to add to share. Just to put a shout out for, for what's available and how you might in your imagination and knowing your people and knowing your context and utilize it. I, I think it would be great to learn too how you do if you choose to take this path that we could learn from you and what, what was your experience? Because uh, I don't think this will be the last time that we're gonna at least be intentional about suggesting uh, ways that you can engage the congregation on generosity. and, and and uh, gratitude. And I just put a quick plug in on that. Um, when you look at the ornaments, the, the ideas about how it could provide for dreaming and also responding that could be uh, on cardstock and, and actually inviting people on an ornament to put a dream that they have on the backside of it and put it on a tree outside or in the sanctuary or take another ornament and, and, and put name uh, just indicate that you're, you're making a commitment and it would hang on the tree. It would be a way of acknowledging participation and, and um, be celebrative. It could be a celebrative way. And there's some other suggestions in there too that yeah. are very activity oriented, but very much dialed into spiritual uh, faith practice thinking. You, you could do something as simple as um, provide a colored envelope, perhaps a blue envelope, um, and in which someone could place their commitment card or just a message of hope, and they could hang that on a tree, um, have that, you know, out certain hours of the day in which they can come in and just hang that there um, as a way to indicate that they're responding, that they're dreaming of the future and what God will do. Thanks for that, Keith. Um, I my two congregations i've talked to the councils and they they still don't want to do stewardship but one of the things i'm planning with them is doing a wall of dreams where people do write down their dreams but then the councils take those dreams and look at them and it's something that can then stir conversation for our annual meeting i i told them it's a sneaky way of doing a survey that's great, thank you. Any other comments, questions, or ideas to share? So I'm gonna take the big risk like uh, people do at the Academy Awards, you know, and hopefully I won't go so long and get yanked off, but I'm gonna try to, re to name all of the people that were on the team. So let's see how I do here. So 
Um, let's see, uh, Pastor Jerry Peterson, or Sam, Snack Others Minister Jerry Peterson, um, Pastor Linda Molitor, um, Pastor Rob Nelson, Keith Zay, of course, was our fearless leader, um, Pastor Greg Bilberg, Pastor Brigitte Catlin, Pastor Gretchen Enoch, and and I know there's help me Pastor out. Pastor Greg here. Bilberg, did you say I, I Pastor Bilberg? <clears throat> Don't forget Chris. And of course, Chris. The Chris, the uh, rock star member of every team. <laughs> and I was on the team too. So uh, thank you so much for gathering this evening. Um, I, Pastor Keith, I wonder if you would close us in prayer. Sure. Gracious God, thank you for the day. Um, as it's drawn to a close and night is upon us and we're making the adjustments uh, to weather and seasonal changes, we're again mindful by being together online, seeing one another, hearing one another and thinking together about, uh, about how you, Lord, could stir up, uh, stir us to dream. And that in that stirring that we would know once more what has always been true, that you were always with us and that you empower us and equip us for your ministry and you embrace us in your unconditional love and accept us unconditionally. And you would give us ministry to do that reaches our neighbor and reaches beyond our church walls. Thank you for these, your beloved ones that joined this evening and for their servanthood. And we pray your spirit's guidance and encouragement and inspiration as they consider how they might engage this possibility in their congregation. All this we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Bill. God's peace be with you this evening. <laughs>